Is sewing human skin to your gums actually a thing? Yes, it's a thing! That's what a gum graft is. We usually take the skin from the roof of the mouth and sew it to your gums. What? Please explain. Hi, my name is Whitney and I'm a dental hygienist here to talk to you and explain everything you need to know about gum grafts. Now, a gum graft or a gum augmentation is a surgical procedure where, like we said in the intro, new gum tissue is grafted onto an area of your mouth where there isn't enough gum tissue. So they will take tissue from one area, usually your palate, the roof of your mouth, and move it to the area of your gums that needs it. It essentially rebuilds the level of the gums back to where it's supposed to be. For example, if you have exposed root surfaces, gum recession, if you're recovering from advanced gum disease, periodontal disease, and or if you're undergoing ridge augmentation, which is actually a type of bone graft, but regardless of the cause, whatever the reason the roots of the teeth aren't covered by enamel, without the gums, the tooth is weaker, more sensitive, and highly prone to tooth decay. So getting a gum graft is what will help manage all of that stuff, the tooth sensitivity, the cavity risks, as well as they can also help after a sinus lift or to plan for dental implants or even sometimes just for aesthetic reasons. However, even if a gum graft surgery sounds like an elective procedure, it sounds like it's just aesthetic to make your smile look good, it's often more than just that. For example, if you're long in the teeth because of aggressive toothbrushing or bruxism, clenching or grinding, gum graft surgery will not only help your teeth appear more attractive, but correcting your gums, bringing your gum levels back to the proper spot will help manage tissue loss from gum disease, which helps keep your gums healthy. You need gum tissue to properly hold your teeth in place, right? So if you are someone who needs a gum graft surgery, be sure to schedule your appointment sooner than later because the longer you wait, the worse your gums become and the worse your dental health becomes. What to expect during a gum grafting appointment? Before you schedule the procedure itself, you would have already had a consultation appointment with your dentist and or your periodontist, the gum specialist, and together you will select the type of gum graft that you need. There are different types of gum grafts, which I'll go over in just a bit, but first, I think it's worth mentioning before I get into it, it's gonna sound intense, but don't freak out because it's not. Gum graft treatment isn't anything to feel nervous about. Periodontists do these procedures every single day and it's very straightforward for them. So although it might sound brutal when I explain this procedure, please know that you will be numb. They will make sure you're comfortable. You won't feel anything. And if your situation requires something more complex, sedation will always be available upon request as well. I do have a video all about the different dental anesthetic options if you're interested in learning more about that. But either way, there are four main types of gum grafts. Actually, technically more. There are also other types of alternatives like pinhole rejuvenation, which could be a whole video itself. Let me know if you're interested in that. But for simplicity's sake, the four main types of gum grafts will generally be one, connective tissue grafts. These are the most common. They usually involve flapping back the tissue on your palate and harvesting a sample of connective tissue underneath, closing the flap, and then suturing the tissue into place around your teeth. Again, I know it sounds intense, but you are numb. Don't forget that. It's totally fine. Super common, normal procedure. Number two, free gingival grafts. Similar to the connective tissue grafts, these ones also involve removing a portion of the tissue from the roof of the mouth, but instead of a flap being created, the surface tissue is removed and transferred to the area receiving the graft. Again, I don't know how much you care all about these details, but I do think it's interesting to at least have an idea about what's going on in your mouth, right? So number three, a pedicle graft. These ones use the gum tissues right next to your receding gums to cover the exposed part of your tooth. So instead of removing tissue from your palate, it's from the gums themselves being retracted and tugged to reposition them around your tooth. And lastly, alloderm grafts. This procedure is actually non-surgical. What they do is slip donor tissue under the edge of your existing gingiva. Sometimes you don't even have to be numb for this one. Again, which one you need will depend on your individual mouth and your individual situation. Your dentist and periodontist will discuss the pros and cons of each with you to decide which one is best for you. And regardless of which type of graft you end up getting, the generalized goal of gum grafting, like we said, is to put more tissue into a spot that needs more tissue, which allows that new tissue to naturally fuse and integrate with the old tissue, bringing your gums back to a healthy level. Now, after all that is done, what should you expect post-surgery? What's the recovery like? So your home care instructions are the most important part of your recovery. Do whatever your dentist and periodontist tell you to do. Some people are placed on a soft diet for a week or more, while others may have sutures that need to be removed a week later, they will tell you. It totally depends where they took the tissue from. In some cases, there may not be any pain afterward, or in other cases, there could be significant discomfort. And interestingly enough, if you're having tenderness, it's usually not from the graft area. 
The gums don't usually hurt afterwards, but the discomfort will usually come from where the graft was harvested from. Most of the time, the roof of your mouth. Think of pizza burn times 10. It's not the end of the world type of pain, but it could be irritating and annoying. Pain, swelling, or irritation are not uncommon after a gum graft surgery, but symptoms don't generally persist for more than a day or so. And any type of discomfort is often managed with an over-the-counter pain reliever like Motrin or a cool compress. Again, your dentist will tell you what you need. Gum graft surgery has about a 90% success rate meaning there is about a one in 10 chance that it could not work, that your body rejects the gum graft tissue or it doesn't take, but thankfully caring for that area properly at home will reduce the risk of any trauma or infection that might contribute to any complications. So more the reason to follow your dentist's home care instructions, it will help increase the success rate of the procedure. I hope this video helped you. If you want to learn more about the cost of gum grafting and dental insurance and all the details about scheduling for the procedure, I will link my gum grafting article in the description box. Please like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. And until next time, I'll see you on Instagram at Teeth Talk Girl. Peace, love, and teeth.